So the future of the Kansas City Chiefs hangs in the balance after their proposal to extend their lease at Arrowhead Stadium got voted down this week, which means there's now a real possibility they could be moving to an entirely different state, or at least that's what some are now saying based on a few key factors that I'm gonna touch on in this video. And after that, I'm gonna look at the most recent updates from the Rasheed Rice car crash incident as his attorney spoke to the media today and officially confirmed what we basically already knew. So let's talk about it, but first, how about those? Yeah. First up, let's talk about why the new sales tax extension that was voted for on Tuesday, April 2nd, did not pass. How this puts the future of both the Chiefs and the Royals remaining in Kansas City into a bit of an unknown and also why the vote wasn't even close. Jackson County residents spoke clearly and voted to reject the extension of the 3 8 cent sales tax to keep both teams around for at least the next couple of decades. That means the current leases for both the Royals and Chiefs are still set to expire in 2031. And at least as of right now, there's the possibility that both of these teams could be fixing to move when their leases expire. It's a complex situation as to why the no votes spoke so much louder than the yes votes. 78,352 voted no. That's 58% compared to 56,606 voted yes, only 42%. Many were unhappy with the Royals being unclear of exactly what the plan was for their downtown stadium, changing things more than once and even super recently, not fully having it all put together and kind of asking the public to just trust them with the future plans in advance. Then for the Chiefs, others thought the upgrades at Arrowhead were lackluster at best, with some of them catering to only those that have a lot of money. Some others have even said that the Chiefs may have wanted this to intentionally fail so they can get a shiny new stadium elsewhere, more on that in a bit, even though I do think the Chiefs want to stay. But then you had some saying the billionaire owners of these teams simply need to pay for their own upgrades and stadiums, and that's why they voted no point blank. It's honestly a very detailed and complex situation with lots of reasons for why someone voted yes or no. But whichever way you thought the vote should have gone or would have gone, it does not matter because the people have spoken, and it was a very loud N-O. I will say, neither the Chiefs or the Royals expected this and were certainly disappointed. We're disappointed. We feel we put forth the best offer for Jackson County, and we were ready to extend the long-standing partnership that the teams have enjoyed with this county. Chiefs team president Mark Donovan went on to say, quote, we will look to do what's in the best interest of our fans and our organization as we move forward. Royals chairman and CEO John Sherman said they are deeply disappointed as we are, quote, steadfast in our belief that Jackson County is far better off with the Chiefs and the Royals, saying they will take some time to reflect on and process the outcome and find a path forward that works for the Royals and the fans. The teams definitely make this at least feel like the future of remaining in Kansas City, Missouri now potentially hangs in the balance, but Casey's mayor, Quentin Lucas, seems a bit more optimistic that something can still get worked out between the teams and the county to keep them around for generations to come. He said in the coming months, he's looking forward to working with the Chiefs and the Royals to build a stronger, more open and collaborative process, which begs the question, were the teams actually bluffing about there being no plan B if this vote fails, would they actually then consider moving the teams elsewhere after the leases expire in 2031 without trying again via a public vote in Jackson County? Well, Chiefs owner Clark Hunt said, if for some reason this doesn't pass, quote, we'll have to consider all of our alternatives, which yes, could include looking elsewhere. I think some people simply voted no in an attempt to call their bluff, believing leaving the city isn't something at least the Chiefs really want to do and think a new, more sensible proposal can get brought forth at another time, considering there's still seven-ish years left on the current lease. And my current thoughts are this. I voted yes, even though the plan wasn't perfect, mainly to guarantee slash lock in the Chiefs remaining at Arrowhead for at least the next 25 years. Even though the vote didn't pass, I think Clark Hunt is very attached to Arrowhead because of its iconic history, as well as his father, Lamar Hunt's legacy and how that is all attached to Arrowhead when he moved the team there in the 1970s. So I truly think the Chiefs will try and work something out with the county to remain there, though obviously it's now not a guaranteed lock. And another place could be very appealing. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but even if the Chiefs try to work with the county, there's still a chance voters shoot down another proposal. And if that happens, other options will definitely then be explored after their lease expires in 2031. For the Royals, 
They seem to have a higher chance of playing elsewhere. They've wanted a downtown stadium, and even though the current chairman and CEO has roots in Kansas City, and ideally would most likely want to stay in the area, they seem the less likely of the two to remain in the city if push comes to shove. Most of you don't follow me for the Royals news though, so pretty much done talking about them, but from here I want to talk about, while I think the Chiefs will do their best to attempt to remain at Arrowhead for years to come, there's certainly others that would love for them to move and would be willing to entice them as much as humanly possible with the temptation of a brand new state-of-the-art stadium and possibly even help them fund it. The most realistic place in that scenario would be the Kansas side of Kansas City. I don't think they truly wanna leave the Kansas City metropolitan area, and this would probably be near the Legends where there's already tons of places to eat, the Kansas Speedway, Sporting KC, and more. The governor of Kansas, Laura Kelly, has already expressed the desire to have the Chiefs over there if she can figure out how to make it work. I would be all for it, uh, obviously. I mean, when I signed the border war truce uh, with Missouri, it didn't include the Chiefs. And even today, Nate Taylor of The Athletic said that Chiefs fans need to come around to the legitimate possibility that the Chiefs could be playing in Kansas around 2030 or 2032. When asked if he thinks the Chiefs will reconvene and try again with Jackson County first. Nate had a clear and sad, in my opinion, one word answer. Do you think the Chiefs are gonna try again in Jackson County first? No. You think they're going straight to Kansas? So Nate just straight up said, no, they're not gonna try again with Jackson County. I'm a bit more hopeful that they will try to work something out, but you can take Nate's word over mine any day. Nate then talked about Clark Hunt making it clear he didn't want to move before the vote happened, but uh... If this doesn't go well, which I put out on Twitter, we will have to discuss other alternatives. Really, there's only one alternative, and we all yeah. know what it is, and we should all be prepared for the idea that the Chiefs may be playing in a new stadium in Kansas in less than a decade. On top of that, the KC Star reported yesterday that former Kansas House Speaker Ron Rickman Jr. is quietly working with unnamed parties interested in bringing the Chiefs across the border. He even gave a quote about Jackson County fumbling and Kansas now being ready for the scoop and score, you know, some real cheesy Chiefsaholic lawyer type stuff, but hey, Kansas does have something Missouri doesn't at the moment, and that is legalized sports betting, which is a huge revenue draw for the league and could mean if the Chiefs move to that side, they could have in-venue sports books at the new stadium, among other benefits from having sports betting legal. Then of course, there's also the obvious, a brand new, shiny, polished stadium that could also potentially include a retractable roof, which would make them eligible to host a Super Bowl and generate a ton of money. That's something Arrowhead will most likely never be able to do because no roof. You have to have a roof to even qualify. And here's another thing. If they got a new stadium elsewhere, brand new one, Clark Hunt would then not be getting reamed by the public after an F minus grade from the NFLPA player report card about having out of date training facilities and an unwillingness to spend more money to upgrade it. There's other reasons why the Kansas side could be a truly palatable option, but instead of going on and on about it, just gonna stop there because we have to wait and see how it all plays out. There's a lot of time here. Again, the lease is not up until 2031. I think they'll try to get things in motion before that. But there's still plenty of time. It's not like they're going anywhere next season, the season after, or the season after that. But that's where I wanna pass the question off to you guys. Where do you sit on this subject? Do you hope Jackson County is able to get something figured out so the Chiefs can stay at the iconic Arrowhead Stadium long-term or are you in line with Nate Taylor that the Chiefs are probably done in Jackson County and will look to head over to the Kansas side and get themselves a new state-of-the-art stadium? Let me know either way in the comments down below. Next up, we have a bit of a Rashi Rice update. Over the weekend, his Corvette and a Lambo, that is in his name, he was renting it, were seen speeding on a Dallas, Texas speedway, and both vehicles lost control, causing six cars total, including the vet and Lambo, to collide and get damaged. Thankfully, there were no major injuries, but everyone in those two vehicles immediately jumped out and fled the scene, and thanks to dash cam footage, as well as TMZ somehow always getting a hold of everything, we saw one of those guys looked very much like Chiefs wide receiver Rashi Rice. This was basically confirmed when it was found out that the Corvette was in his name and the Lamborghini was being rented in his name. Things went silent for a day and a half after that. That was on Easter and into Monday. As it was reported, the police were looking for him in connection to the wreck and everyone on social media was trying to figure out if he was really involved or not. 
Some were just flat out in denial, to be honest. And then on Monday, we found out he retained counsel and his lawyer is Royce West, a state senator and has also represented good old Jerry Jones in the past. Mr. West released a statement saying Rashi is cooperating with local authorities, so we knew he'd at least been in contact with them. From there, the updates to the situation since that statement are as follows. TMZ dropped an article detailing the Lamborghini Rice was renting was from a company called The Classic Lifestyle. And the attorney representing Classic Lifestyle, Kyle Coker, said that Rice sent a text shortly after the wreck acknowledging he was involved in the crash and promising to pay for the Lamborghini, which was totaled. So this pretty much confirmed what most already knew or allegedly thought happened. Uh, Rice was involved and was driving the Lambo with a friend of his driving his Corvette. Rice then released a statement of his own yesterday on social media that said, quote, today I met with Dallas PD investigators regarding Saturday's incident. I take full responsibility for my part in this matter and will continue to cooperate with the necessary authorities. I sincerely apologize to everyone impacted in Saturday's accident. And from there, after the release of the statement, Rice proceeded to get cooked, no pun intended, by the masses in the comments, mainly because he fled the scene. So they're saying responsibility, Rice, would have been to check on the victims of the crash rather than running away. And since they all did flee the scene, we may never know why Rice and company ran away. There's the potential that they allegedly could have had something in their possession that they didn't want the police to find, or that the drivers may not have been able to pass a toxicology report that will basically be impossible to prove one way or another since they did flee the scene. There's also the possibility they ran just because they were afraid of the repercussions in general, speeding on the highway and wrecking their cars. But again, the vet was registered to Rice and the Lambo was being rented in his name, so that doesn't really add up. Another update around the Rasheed Rice situation is that today his lawyer, Senator Royce West, spoke to the media about the case. He said that he reached out to the Dallas Police Department on Rice's behalf Sunday evening, and they have since met two separate times with them. He said Rice has fully cooperated with the police department and has responded to every question asked of him by the police and will continue to cooperate with the department all throughout the process. From there, Rice is gonna do everything he can in his power to bring the lives of those affected back to as normal as possible, both for any injuries sustained or property damage caused by this. He'll make certain that he's responsible for helping the victims get through that. And the victims or their representation are being reached out to by Mr. West and his associates personally. Mr. West then also made clear that nothing they can do to help the victims monetarily will take away from the memories of the accident, and they understand that part of it. So they're gonna continue working with Dallas PD, and that is pretty much that. Although Senator West did answer from the jump once and for all that Rice was indeed driving that Lamborghini. Uh, during the interview, Mr. Rice acknowledged that he was driving the Lamborghini. That was the question of his answer and he responded to them that he was driving the Lamborghini. He then mentioned Rice will speak out about this maybe in a week or so to the media. I'm not sure, but he's gonna speak out in some fashion. And then the last point I found worth mentioning is that he kept telling the media to let the investigation continue playing out and not to judge Rice by this one action, though Rice has acknowledged he was in the wrong, but instead by his entire body of work. So time will tell, and from here, it's just a matter of waiting to let the legal process play out. The Chiefs will do the same, and as long as Rice is honest with them, I don't see him being released like Kareem Hunt was years back or anything crazy like that. Then the NFL will do an investigation of their own, and we will see what suspension length, if any, comes from it. I would think he gets some sort of minor suspension, two to four games at some point this season. And it could even come as a random surprise, kind of like uh, Justin Ross, Charles Minnehue, uh, pick a name. Sometimes it's a complete surprise. We don't know when they're gonna be suspended. But with all that being said, let me know your thoughts on the Rice situation as it continues to develop. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.